In January 1917, four young radio enthusiasts decided there should be an amateur radio club based in the center of Milwaukee. They were Dr. Loy Shell Halegas Baird, 9HO, A.C. Clutch Jr., J.B. Hitz, and Alonzo Pauling. They formed the Milwaukee Radio Amateurs Club, or MRAC. There were already some suburban radio clubs who would all cease operations within the following years, some merging into MRAC. They were joined by a number of others, including Herb Waring, who would be the fourth president of the club, and Clarence Crapo, who would be the second club president. Those two men would be lifelong club members, and they're seen here in a 1970 photo of club life members. In 1919, the American Radio Relay League, or ARRL, began a program of affiliating with local clubs to further the goal of being able to relay messages throughout the country. MRAC became one of the first 10 clubs to affiliate in 1919. In 1970, ARRL informed MRAC that of the first 10 clubs affiliated, only MRAC was still active. The club was continuing to grow by, in some instances, absorbing members from other local clubs who had ceased operations. Membership in the MRAC, as well as ARRL, can be seen displayed on these QSL cards of the era. The early days of radio, amateur or commercial, were often reported in local newspapers as well as in the ham press. In fact, MRAC has enjoyed press coverage throughout its history, ranging from regular columns in the local papers, appearances in QST, up to making magazine covers, and calendars too. More on that later. MRAC also got into the publishing business for a time in the 1920s with their Badger ARRL News, even having members in every state who joined just to get the small magazine. Any group of people with common interests need some social events too, and MRAC had them ranging from Christmas parties to the Badger Hand Roundup and QSO Party, which should not be confused with today's operating contest. Some of these gatherings had upwards of 300 people attending. Remember, every household did not even have an automobile yet. Some parties had special guests, like when Dick Baldwin, W1RU, ARRL general manager, came out to deliver a second certificate of affiliation ARRL didn't know they had sent one in 1919, having discovered another in a file cabinet in 1979, which was the 60th anniversary of the affiliation between MRAC and ARRL. Many of the dinners had prizes and even a raffle. Of late, the February meeting has been a dinner meeting, inviting another area club to participate with MRAC sort of a novel concept among some area clubs. Then there were ham fests and conventions, including the first ARRL Central Division convention held anywhere, right here in Milwaukee, and also working with the Chicago Area Radio Club Council to have a convention in Chicago. And then the big one of all, an ARRL National Convention was held in Milwaukee in 1948. Maybe having the Central Division Director as a club member helped. 
the convention chairman would himself become a division director in later years. MRAC has had a number of ARRL officials as members, including division directors, vice director, section manager, emergency coordinators, and even an assistant secretary of ARRL in the 1950s. Oh, and back to the National Convention. Besides prizes, there was even a song commissioned. Overall, the convention was very successful for the club, to the tune of an almost $8,000 profit. How do we know that? We have the convention ledger. Well, actually, the profit was $7,501.08. Continuing the convention tradition, MRAC currently operates a small ham fest in partnership with another club. It's that cooperation thing again. MARS, the Milwaukee Area Amateur Radio Society. MRAC also got the public service ball rolling in the area. Public service really came into its own during World War II. Hams were ordered off the air except for a small number involved with the War Emergency Radio Service, or WERS. What that meant for MRAC was the building and installation of radio equipment and antennas at all city and suburban police departments in Milwaukee County. In 1947, MRAC receives the club call, W9HRM, which had belonged to Erwin Kreis, who passed away the previous year. In 1968, MRAC received a new shorter call, which is still in use today. W9RH was previously held by Emil Felber, who passed away in 1967. In 1950, MRAC took the ARRL National Convention profit and purchased and outfitted one of the first amateur radio communications vehicles in the country. That received local and national press, as well as visits by local politicians. MRAC sold the van to the City of Milwaukee in 1956 for $3,500, including radios. From almost the beginning, MRAC conducted code and theory classes. All grades of licenses were covered. Some were informal gatherings before club meetings, and some were structured in a classroom setting. Some were done on the air, and even theory was tried on the air. During a run of classes between 1976 and 1996, over 500 different people took at least one class. Of course, conducting classes means the need to take a test. When the Volunteer Examinator Coordinator Program was created, MRAC first dipped their toe in by being a VE, and then in 1984, MRAC formed what is today one of only 14 Volunteer Examinator Coordinators in the country. The manager of the MRAC, VEC, was chairman of the National Council of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators, or NCVEC, for five years in the early 2000s, which brought more national press. It is only natural for an active club to promote amateur radio to the general public. MRAC has tried all sorts of venues for that, ranging from a citywide hobby show in 1938 through some shopping mall exhibits in 1978 and 1979 with local Aries groups, up to and including participation in Milwaukee Maker Fairs starting in 2015 and continuing. MRAC was among 250 exhibitors at the 2016 show. An example of a high-altitude balloon project can also be seen in some pictures, and 
And oh yes, we're involved in that too. And Boy Scouts Jamboree on the Air, JOTA, had MRAC participation. MRAC has supported other amateur radio organizations, including the Chicago Area Radio Club Council, the Wisconsin Council of Radio Clubs, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation, and of course, ARRL, including its building fund of the 1960s up through today's Spectrum Defense Fund. With all this activity, MRAC has received some recognition. You saw a sample of press coverage. The club has also received plaques from the American Radio Relay League. Milwaukee City Hall displayed a message for Amateur Radio Day, May 17, 1980. That was just an arbitrarily chosen date. There have been proclamations by the City of Milwaukee and the State of Wisconsin. We are able to present this information as the club save documents and more from the start. That puts Milwaukee Radio Amateurs Club ahead of many organizations who have little historical archives. The archives are being digitized and distributed, and a history overview book is regularly updated. Then there is Field Day. MRAC has participated in almost every one. Field Day has been at numerous locations, some big productions and some not. Locations have been across three counties. Field Day is also an opportunity to train new and old hams. The actual score is secondary. Combining Field Day with publicity happened the year CQ Magazine sent their photographer to spend the entire Field Day weekend with the club. That resulted in numerous months and covers of two years worth of CQ calendars and a couple of magazine covers as well. And what would field day be without the disco balls and tents? This is the W9RH repeater. MRAC does have a repeater. We have had things like announcements by Gordon West, as well as being one of the first tenants of the community repeater site. In 2014, MRAC became one of the first Yezu Fusion repeater beta sites. Plus, we soon started a weekly fusion net on the repeater. Over 100 years, there have been a lot of activities the Milwaukee Radio Amateurs Club was part of. Too many to cover in just a few minutes. Some of the items include multiple special event operations, establishing Milwaukee Amateur Radio Emergency Service, which was called AREC at the time, including a board of directors to own equipment for ARES, annual equipment auctions, regular giveaways, and raffles at meetings. Club meetings with special guests like ARRL officials and employees, Gordon West, WB6NOA, has visited four times, representatives of various ham and other electronic equipment manufacturers, being a shuttle amateur radio experiment QSL manager, picnics, and much, much more. The Milwaukee Radio Amateurs Club welcomes you to the W9RH repeater. recording so the, the only thing I can say is my regards to all you boys and uh, Charlie will uh, finish off. Listen Mr. Chairman I made a motion to adjourn and you know very well that a motion to adjourn is in order anywhere anytime at any place so all in favor say aye opposed none opposed so we're adjourning so long fellas. 
The Milwaukee Radio Amateur Club welcomes you. For club information, see www.w9rh.org. This is Gordo, WB6NOA, saying 73.